Hey, good day, big bikers. I wonder, do you know what an anna branch is? Because I had never ever heard of the term until I started reading about Charles Sturt. And then I found this sign here, the great anna branch of the Darling. So basically what it is, there's Menindi Lakes, that's the Darling River, it's the Murray River. So this is a branch of the Darling River that is split off. And an anna branch technically, so that's 300, 480 kilometers. So an anna branch is technically a river that splits off and then joins back onto the same river. But this one splits off the Darling and actually joins joins back at the Murray River, but it's very, very close to the Darling River, so they've called it an anna branch. The Rufus River comes out of Lake Victoria and then it goes over into South Australia. We know that line's wrong, right? <laughs> See the little. <laughs> So it goes over into South Australia and then the, does this big dive south from there. So we'll talk about that when we get over that way. Let's go for a ride. That's the Anna Branch. We're heading in towards Wentworth. So I was at Wampini Station for about 10 days, absolutely loved it out there, had this magic spot down by the river, um, Eric and Kerry, fantastic hosts, uh, it was just magnificent, really, really enjoyed this time there, but I heard on the radio that they were going to open the South Australian border, so I had to come back in to get some fuel, top up the van and just do a couple of things and before I was going to take the van over the South Australian border into Renmark. So it's Thursday today, so they opened the border with South Australia today, but only to the ACT. Now the ACT is landlocked, so you've got to go through New South Wales to get to South Australia. And then I'm thinking, okay, well it's just the politicians and the government workers who have to fly between Adelaide and Canberra that they've really made it available to. There are no COVID cases in the ACT, so that's why they've done it. So I've got my hopes up for nothing. I thought I was going to be on the road again. But anyway, so I've, I've moved back to the Fort Courage Caravan Park on the Murray River. I'm heading into Wentworth now, just got to grab some fuel. And then we're going to go out to the border again, because I want to show you something that uh, we didn't, I didn't know about the other day when I put up that uh, Todd's Obelisk video. We're going to go back to Todd's Obelisk, and then I'm going to tell you a little story. Hang on, there's a bit of info in Wentworth I want to share with you as well. Alright, got ourselves some fuel. That's the road to Mildura, the Victorian border. No entry. Well, you can get in. <laughs> if I go in, I'm not getting out. I really feel sorry for you guys down there in uh, in Victoria. Just um, I know the regional areas have just opened up a little bit, but uh, um, you know what a mess, absolute mess. So here's another one of these. Um, I'm going to show you this. Here's another one of these monuments that we have in Australia. of a tractor. Can you see that? This was unveiled in 1959. So it's a, during a flood, a tractor helped out a whole heap of people. Grey Massey Ferguson. <laughs> so they made a statue. <laughs> it's like a dog on a tackle box. But I want to take you to the junction of the Murray River and the Darling River. That is, that is the Murray-Darling Junction. It's 
called a confluence, just, just in case you didn't know. Um, uh, so the confluence of the Murray Darling. That's it, right there. I'll throw the drone up. It's the Murray River going up that way, and that's the Darling River just there. So it was in 1829, uh, November in 1829, when Charles Sturt rode down that way, and they saw here uh, this river, and he said, that has to be the Darling River, and so they rode upstream for quite a bit and came back down the river and he said yep it's definitely the darling checking his compass he says that one goes north it looked like the same water and then he came back and they went down and they went all the way down to uh to murray bridge as you know let's look at these if you can see those pelicans wide angle lens so 1829 he went down uh, 1830 he came back up what he didn't realize at the time or maybe he did was he'd unlocked one of the most important water assets in Australia because they didn't really know about any other river systems at the time and the, you know in terms of all the ones up north of here and all the ones that feed into the Darling and all the ones that feed into the Murray they kind of knew about them but I don't think they realized the value you know, when I talk about the early explorers they weren't the only ones that were out here because what would happen is they'd go back to Sydney and there'd be newspaper articles, and there'd be big celebrations, and there'd be all these uh, major events around him because it was a government-sanctioned expedition. But there were plenty of other settlers that were actually out exploring, but because of the fact that they uh, weren't government-sanctioned or government-supported or government-sponsored, there was no newspaper articles or anything being written about them. So the official ones that we know about today were written about in the newspaper and then what people would do is they would see these articles written and, and they'd see the maps and the drawings and they'd go right and they'd grab all of their belongings and they'd just take off and they'd go and lay claim to a stake of land and and that happened all through New South Wales and, and all through uh, what I've got to stop saying New South Wales what we now know as New South Wales in the 1800s up until they started putting the borders in and started dividing the country up, it was all New South Wales over into the 135th longitude meridian. And the, the west of that was New Holland, which is now Western Australia. So everything, everything east of that line was New South Wales. And so what happened was they would just go out and they'd grab parcels of land. And then when Charles Sturt came down in 1829 and then back up in 1830, Again, huge fanfare when he arrived back and massive stories all about it. And then people just started arriving from everywhere. So between 19, uh, sorry, between 1823 and 1829, that whole area through New South Wales and Yass and the AC to what we now know as Canberra and the ACT and all those plains and that agriculture area, just people were out there in their farming communities and everything exploding out from Sydney. Victoria was still a very, very small settlement. Um, there was a little bit of exploration. So it wasn't until 1829 when Charles Sturt sailed down there they realised South Australia was a potential settlement place as well. There's a few stories around that, and I'll talk about South Australia as I cross the border and go into it, because it's a pretty interesting story what they did. But you can't understate how valuable this river system was to the early settlement of Australia. In the 1850s, uh, the South Australian government at the time, and I'll talk about how that was all set up, as I said, when I go across the South Australian border, but the government at the time, in the 1850s, gave, put up a bounty or reward for the first um, paddle boat that could go all the way from Adelaide up to here this junction if they get up to the Murray Darling with a paddle boat so a couple of people did that there's some really interesting stories about it but paddle boats became so intrinsically valuable to 
the Australian economy that at one stage during the mid-1880s there was like 300 paddle steamers and river boats on this river at any one time. And I didn't realise until I started doing some research about it, but they could get all the way from Adelaide up here. You could go up the Darling, you could go up to Burke, you could go up to, well, you know, Poon Carry, just ports all along the way when the water was high. And you could get all the way up if you went up the Bogon and the, the McIntyre. You could go up into Queensland, what is now Queensland, and even St George, which blows my mind. It's thousands of kilometres away. So though these, these river boats, these paddle steamers, would go all the way up to Queensland and up to, up to what we now know as St George. And there's rocks across the river there which would stop people from getting any further up. You know, we went to Cordillo Downs a couple of years ago, the largest shearing shed in the Southern Hemisphere. And they would get their bales of wool on a camel train or a bullock dray, and they would take it to places like Burke, or they'd take it to Cunnamulla, and then they'd take it down. It was just phenomenal. And it wasn't until the early 1900s that the rail system was put in place to such the extent that it actually took over from the riverboats. And then obviously now we've got the road network system. And so the riverboats basically died out. But just, you know, 300 at any one time on this river system. And they could go all the way up to Queensland from the Darling River. But if you went up that way, you went up the Murray River up into the Murrumbidgee, you could actually service all of that area through central New South Wales. And then those areas could get their stuff down to Melbourne by shipping it up the Murray River. The the coastal stuff, obviously, they use ships and sailed everything around, but the western side of the Great Dividing Range, the Murray-Darling-Murrumbidgee River system was the superhighway. And, you know, it's 2020, we've kind of forgotten a lot about that history and the paddle boats, and really the only, the only boats that gets used, these are recreational boats and leisure craft, and you've kind of got to go to places like Echuca, Moama, Swan Hill to have a look at the history of the, the paddle steamers there. But it's just incredible to think that it wasn't until the rail system was implemented that Australia's river systems have stopped really stopped being used but it was here it was this river here this river system that uh, created so much wealth and made it so easy for people to transport their goods you know transportation for us these days is so easy i just fly it there overnight courier no problem but back in the day it was this river system here was the super highway all right that's enough talking, let's go riding. So the plan for today is we're going to head back out to the South Australian border. Which, uh, from here, about 90 k's away, maybe yeah, about 90. Um, we're, get, we're not going to go and... Oh, we might go back to Todd's Obelisk, but we won't go to the Obelisk itself. Or we might, you never know. <laughs> Actually, we probably will. <laughs> Alright, we've got about 100 kilometres to go. 90 kilometres to the border. It's about 150 k's to Renmark from here. Just looking at this weather, it, it is getting very, very overcast. There is some forecast for rain over the next couple of days, but uh, it should be right today. Coming up to the South Australian border. I've done 100 kilometres since Wentworth. And uh, Renmark's still another 50 kilometres. the border here. I want to show you something. <laughs> I heard about this marker from Eric. So I thought I'd come and have a look at it. So in 1846 South Australia wanted to split off from New South Wales. We'll talk about that in another video. Um, and they wanted to create their own province. So 
uh, they decided that the 141st parallel uh, meridian line longitude was the right way to do it this is the 141st meridian here and then it wasn't until 18 so that was 1846 that they decided that was the line and it wasn't until 1868 they actually came and measured it properly and they discovered that two miles and 19 chains that way so 3.2 kilometers it is actually out and so there's a massive dispute now this is new south wales that's south australia the dispute is actually between victoria and south australia so that's down that way a little bit so that reckoning was done in 1868 then in 1993 they came out here with all the latest technology and you know uh, gps technology and all that sort of stuff and they determined <laughs> i love the wording excuse the idiot holes these uh, people who shoot signs because they can't shoot anything that's moving uh, are idiots there was a joint investigation between the uh, surveyors of South Australia and of New South Wales. And there's a really interesting wording here. <laughs> the section of border redetermined started at the Murray River and proceeds generally northwards on or about the 141st east meridian of longitude to Cameron Corner at the intersection point of New South Wales and the Queensland border. The lines adopted for the border follow as closely as possible using remaining historical evidence the original position as determined by Todd and Smalley in 1868 and subsequently adopted by the colonies in New South Wales and South Australia as their common boundary. And this, But it almost looks like and it reads like that's not the 141st meridian either. <laughs> but they're just going to leave it. Looney and Grant, so C.W. Looney, Surveyor General of South Australia, and D.M. Grant, Surveyor General of New South Wales. A trig point on top and a line running down the middle. So that's the South Australian New South Wales border. But that's not why we came here. Now the, the border check for New South Wales to South Australia is actually about uh, 20 k's down that way, um, where it joins the bitumen, it's the only road uh, into South Australia, so they've, rather than coming and sitting out here all day, they've set up a point closer to Renmark. So when I came out to Todd's Obelisk, which according to the map should be up this road here, track, I, when I did the video I uh, received a message from a fellow called John Atkinson and um, a really really interesting message and he gave me a couple of links to follow so I went down and did that and then I posted that up on the um, Facebook page and I was very glad to read that I was the only one that didn't know about it. So in 1975, so correct me if I'm wrong, before the start of the Fink races and before the Wynn Safari races, there was a race, I'm going to put the spelling in here, I'm pretty sure it was the MK500, and it was a race from Broken Hill to Renmark and then back to Broken Hill. Now the instructions, <laughs> and there was a there was a like a pace car came out to mark out the track, but it broke down. So most of the markers and most of the riders actually, well not most, but there was just riders everywhere and just people not knowing where to go. But the instructions were leave Broken Hill and ride west until you come to the fence, go to the border, follow the border down. Get to Todd's Obelisk, turn uh, west again and head towards uh, Redmark. And then they did it in reverse the next day. Interestingly enough, the winner of that event was John Atkinson in 1975 on his Husqvarna 400. 
So I'm, I'm going to put a link to the article he sent. A really, really interesting reading. And uh, I'm going to put a link to the article in the description here for you to have a look at. So the Australian Motorcycle News uh, in Australia put an article out. And, um, yeah, it's a terrific read. So, John, thanks for that link, mate. That's a terrific bit of motorcycle history about this area as well. I was very impressed with that. So, uh, yeah, have a look at that as well. What we're going to do now... There's no one's watching. Taking it easy, I'll just cross over actually. I'm just taking it easy, it's not a race today. South Australia at the moment. Depending on which of the uh, meridian lines you want to use. <laughs> fence is it? Right.
Zabulisk. Just here. Oh, gates open this time. Hmm. Anyway, so that was it. That's the um, South Australian side of the border. For time, couple women by my side. I got sitting on my mind, sipping on red wine. I've been sitting there for ages, ripping out the pages. How to get so faded? How to get so faded? Oh no, no, don't leave me lonely now. If you love me, how you never learn? Wanna took a free my mind This is how it ends I feel the chemicals running my bloodstream Fading out again I feel the chemicals burning my bloodstream Tell me when it kicks in I just stepped off the bike to open the gate and I looked down. <laughs> I've just been seeing a heap of snakes around lately because uh, the weather's just starting to warm up. I got a picture of one the other day, actually, I'll put in here. Um, <laughs> a red belly black snake uh, with a, a lizard, like a bearded dragon or something, it was having for lunch. I didn't get any video of it. All right. Hello. Big emu. He just vanished. All right, I'm slowing down. I hit a roo the other night. Fortunately, I was in the Land Cruiser and uh, got him square on the winch mount. Um, yeah, he didn't survive. Smangled my number plate up a little bit. But, uh, it's easy fix. There's no damage to the car or underneath the car. So what was I doing out at night in the Land Cruiser, I hear you ask. Well, when we get to Lake Victoria, I will answer. So, if you follow this road back the other way, it's the dirt road back to Broken Hill. I'll find the name of it and put it in there because I know a few of you guys are keen to kind of do something exploring out this way. It's not in great condition, no, it's pretty corrugated. I wouldn't bring the van on this road. Give you some context of where we are. The 
we're still heading kind of there's the Murray River just where the tree line is over there. There's an intersection here, a T intersection. If you go right, you go up to Wampini Station. And we can go left back towards Lake Victoria. So if you're coming, if you're coming out to Wampini Station, that's Cal Cal Road it's called, C-A-L, or Cal, Cal Al, oh, like Superman, Cal Al. That's the, their emu, keep an eye on that, that was made by Jazz, um, of, uh, Jasmine Rose of the, uh, of the art gallery there, so... She um, she makes all the artwork out there. Worthwhile checking out. Kalal. Kalal. I was pretty sure that was Superman today, wasn't it? Kalal. I'll have to check that. Anyway, let's go to Lake Victoria. Oh, it's a big show, this one. What's going on in this episode? <laughs> so you remember we came down here the other day with Darren? That's the Rufus River. They used to be able to ride up there. Put rocks up there so they can't ride up there. <laughs> yeah, right, okay. Yes, I know. But I want to show you something. <laughs> when I came up here the other day, with Darren, I actually looked at the looked at the lake, and it was it was a little bit rough like this at the moment. And I looked at the lake, and I thought that would be absolutely fantastic on a clear night to get some reflected star photography, some astrophotography. So I've been waiting for the perfect conditions, and the other night. Bang, we got them, and I came out here, I took some really, really nice shots, I put them in, but that's how I hit the kangaroo, because I was coming out here in the Land Cruiser with all my camera gear, cleaned up a roo, but in a reward for that I got some really great shots. Hey, well that was a big show today, wasn't it? So we started at um, Windworth and uh, just talked about the riverboats. Uh, how they went all the way up to Queensland. We went out to the uh, South Australian border and had a look at that uh, 1993 marker, which may or may not be on the 141st uh, Meridian. <laughs> we talked about the, uh, the, the big bike race in 1975. Went up and had a look at Todd's a little bit of that track along the fence in South Australia, back up in Todd's uh, Obelisk. We went to turn off to Wampini up that Calal Road, and I need to check whether or not that is actually the smelling of Superman. Tree. And there's a massive river. <laughs> it's 
just over there. Amazing. Anyway, heading back to the caravan. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Make a comment. Be happy to hear from you. And I love the interaction. Alright, thanks guys. Over and out.